Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Today, uh, there might be a little bit of an echo in here. I'm in my office in my new house. Finally did close one week ago. And right now we're still in the middle of unpacking everything. So there's nothing on the walls, got boxes everywhere and things are a mess. Uh, and it was actually hard for me to dig up some tin car rods and my video equipment to uh, do this video at all. But today we're gonna talk about zoom rods. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on zoom rods, whether you love them or hate them or think they're a necessary evil, please put your comments down below. There we go. Here's a, right in front of those submerged rocks. Oh, he's burrowing in them. This looks like a nice fish. It's a brown. which fly he took. I did put on a, a lower fly, a, a yarn, green UV yarn body with the black thorax and soft tackle. So I'm not sure what he took, but I wanted a little extra weight to anchor the, the fly in this wind. Oh yeah, that's a real nice brown. Long but skinny. Took this tungsten surveyor, which is the top fly. There we go. Get the other fly out of there. There. See if we can get a look at him there. He's about seven and eight is 15 inches or so. A little on the thin side, but, and I did wet my hands. Just didn't see it off camera. There we go. Most people are aware of this, but obviously a, a, a zoom rod is a multi-position rod, so it can be fished in several positions. Now they've been around for a while. I know most people or a lot of people think Tenkara USA, um, you know, there's Sato and Ito and so on were some of the early ones. Uh, but actually Chris Stewart from Tenkara Bum had imported some from Japan uh, even before that. But I've got an example of a few here. So the Tanuki Golden Trout, the uh, Tenru uh, TF39TA, and this is the Wasatch uh, Tenkara rod, the Darth Quattro. And the reason I'm using these as, a, as examples to start with, so the Tanuki is a two position rod, the Tenru is a three position rod, and the Quattro, hence the name, is a uh, four position rod, the first of its kind. So they come in a variety, obviously, you know, little rods, big rods. Uh, I even have a few uh, Japanese uh, Keiru rods, so this is the Fine Power uh, MP66 is also uh, a multi-position rod, so two position. And I've said before, uh, I have a hard time uh, thinking of when I would be able to fish, you know, 20 feet uh, for a rod and not be able to fish you know, 21 and a half feet or something of that nature, whatever the, the specs are on that. Um, usually I, I see it more in the, in the sweet spot in that 11 to 13 foot range. Some of the smaller rods coming in uh, multi-positions can come in handy as well. So you can have obviously extremely short ones and you can have very long ones. So this is the Gamakatsu uh, Suimu uh, uh, 5.0, EX 5.0. And we'll talk a little bit more about that, but they come in a variety, I guess is the point I'm trying to get at. Obviously the idea behind the uh, zoom rods are the fact that you can carry one rod to cover a wide variety of water. So rather than carrying two, three, or even four rods in the Quattro's 
uh, situation, you can carry a single rod to cover theoretically the same amount of water. So I think what you'll hear me say or imply a lot during this video is that some of the zoom rods are a bit of a compromise and I'll get more into that in a bit. But first I'd like to talk a little bit about how these things work. So, and I'll put up, I'll put up pictures of these, but the Quattro and other zoom rods, most of the zoom rods have a, you know, O-rings on the butt cap. So the stem, so the, the lower sections seat on those O-rings the obvious you know aspect or concern with that is sometimes the o-rings do wear out sometimes quicker than we would like so that's one of the trade-offs right there is the fact that you have some parts that may fail um, you know it doesn't render the the rod useless it just maybe that lower sections might not be held firmly they might rattle or you just need to fish them at a longer rod position other rods like the Gamakatsu series, they have on the butt cap uh, kind of a tapered rubber uh, tip that the, the sections slip over and, and are held securely. Um, the TAO, which I'll so, uh, show you a picture of that, it's the Bad Axe. That actually also has a, kind of a, a bulge or kind of a friction tape on that second section. So as it slides in, it kind of seats it at the end of the handle there. It also does have the O-rings at the, at the butt cap, although I think based on uh, an, a review done by Tom Davis uh, quite some time ago, it didn't used to. It was just held uh, there at the end of the handle. So a lot of different ways to accomplish the same thing. Now these rods aren't, aren't perfect. Uh, there, there's a number of things I mentioned. One is the O-rings already. The second had to do with the heck and have a different feel between the different rod uh, lengths. And the, they tend to be just slightly heavier with the additional parts and the, you know, the additional section on the, the butt cap. Um, you know, and they have to make them so they don't rattle when they're at their you know, uh, intermediate positions as well. Um, and the balance won't be the same, obviously, at the longer length as it will at the, at the shorter length. So I can, I can say uh, confidently that probably any of the rods that are zoom rods uh, for a given length, whatever length that may be uh, uh, that the rod uh, will fish in, I can find a rod that same length that I prefer better. Um, and the reason that is, is for things that we've talked about, they're a little increased weight, um, the, the flex is a little bit different, so it's a compromise across the, the variety of lengths that a, that a rod has. Um, the other aspect of it that you don't really think about until you go to fish them is you may want to carry additional lines with a, a rod that is you know, fishable at multiple lengths. Reason being if you, know, you might use a, a line that's too long at the shorter length, but then it might be too short at the, at the longer length. So you may find yourself wishing you had additional lines with you at the time, or maybe it, you can choose a line length that fits the middle, um, the middle position and find that that serves most of the situation. So overall, these rods, they, they, they fit a purpose. And what I find interesting is more so for the uh, American company rods, and I've done a video talking about Japanese company versus American company, but a lot of the American company rods are zoom rods. If you think about it, like the dragon tail rods, all except for the Nirvana 400 and the Shadow Fire are zoom rods. Same thing with Wasatch Tenkara. As far as I know or can think of, all of their current rod offerings are zoom rods. The one exception to that is Tanuki, as far as the rod companies. Uh, he only has the Golden Trout is the only one, and that's uh, out of stock right now. I'm not sure if it's gonna be replaced somewhere down the line. It is a two position, and that's Luong's only offering in a zoom rod. And from talking to him, as well as some of the other rod makers, um, it's really challenging to design a multi-position rod that meets their performance criteria or expectations uh, based on weight, based on flex, uh, you know, so 
some are hesitant to do that if, if they can't make it feel the way they want it to feel, which is easier with a single position rod. So again, trade-offs. That's really what it comes down to. But they do have their place. So next thing I'll talk about is when do I use them? Um, I, I can say in one breath that I would prefer a single position rod for a given length compared to the zoom rods. Uh, but the fact is I do use a lot of zoom rods. And so I do a lot of backpacking. And so something like the Tenru or, um, or the Quattro, and I haven't fished that yet, but I foresee that being uh, a staple in my backpack because when I go backpacking in the wilderness, there's a lot of different streams and situations that I encounter. Some are brushy, some are open, big fish, small fish, that sort of stuff. So. It's nice from a portability standpoint, obviously, to have a very compact rod uh, and also to have multiple lengths to be able to fish to cover that variety of situations. Um, so I don't have to carry as many rods when I'm backpacking if I'm you know, in a situation where I'm you know, counting every, every gram. So another situation I might use them is obviously a known water where I know the cover and casting room uh, changes. My normal approach there is to think about what is the longest rod I can get away with most of the time. And I'll start with that as the, the longest position of the zoom rod that I'm uh, intending to take with me and obviously go shorter from there. You could also do it the opposite of what's the sh you know, smallest, most restricted part of the stream and start with the shortest length of the zoom rod, which that would work there. Now there's some streams, but it does, doesn't matter. It's going to be the rods are going to be too long, but uh, that, that's kind of the approach I take. I I lean towards longer, uh, the longest I can get away with most of the time. And if the shortest length is still too long for some parts of the stream, I'm I'm just either going to use a different rod uh, if I want to carry multiple rods, or I'm just going to skip those parts of the water and vice versa. If I have a rod that's too short, you may have to not be able to fish some sections that you would like to fish as well. One aspect that I've come across a couple times where having a zoom rod has been helpful uh, was actually specifically with this uh, Gamakatsu 5.0. And they can be helpful when you're uh, fighting fish. So if I'm at a shorter length and I hook into a fish that might be uh, you know, a fair size for that given rod, uh, if you can extend it, it gives you a little bit more leverage, a little bit more um, forgiveness in fighting the fish and control fighting the fish and maybe protect the tippet a little bit better depending on the change of penny ratings. Or in, in my case with this specific rod, I actually had a very large rainbow on the other end of the line and I had a fairly long line and it was at its longest length and so it can make it a little bit uh, awkward uh, or difficult to hand line, you know, get, to initially get that line to hand. So sometimes shortening the rod may help you be able to reach the line as well. So that's kind of it in a nutshell as far as my thoughts on zoom rods. I think they're uh, practical and functional in a lot of situations. They're not ideal as far as performance and balance. Um, and they can limit the need to carry multiple rods, but I also may not enjoy fishing them at certain lengths or just you know as enjoyable as fishing a single position rod of the same length. So that's kind of it. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the, on the zoom rods. If you have them, if you like them, or if you, you know, tolerate them. So anyways, thanks for joining and we'll see you on the next video.